problem, I'm calling this an EMF of a rotating semicircle. Okay, so we have a semicircular, uh, semicircular wire here, like this, and it's pivoted about its origin, the vertex here. This is, let's call this the origin, right? And then it's pivoting, it's rotating about its origin, right? And it says, find the EMF of the rotating semicircle if it is accelerating at a rate of alpha. So that's the angular acceleration. So it's picking up speed and it's starting to rotate faster and faster and faster, right? The magnetic field exists in this region only, right? So as it, as it starts to enter that region, the magnetic flux through this wire starts increasing, right? So how does the EMF uh, in this wire change as a function of time? So we'll first do it where the alpha is constant, the rotational acceleration is constant, and then we'll do a case where, let's say, the rotational acceleration is not constant. What will happen? Okay. So then, uh, what's going to happen if alpha is constant? So how do we start deriving this? What's the idea of this? So what you have to do is you have to say, after a certain amount, after it has rotated through a certain angle, it looks like this. Right? So how much of the semicircle is inside of the magnetic field? So we're going to say the EMF induced is minus d by dt phi b, right? The magnetic field, right? The, the rate of negative, the rate of change of the magnetic flux. So then we're going to say here minus d by dt, this is going to be b dA, right? But then here, the magnetic field is uh, out of the board and the area is also out of the board, right? So then uh, they're gonna be in the same direction and since the magnetic field is constant in this case, we do not have to integrate. So it just basically ends up being minus d by dt, ba, and then the magnetic field can come out of the uh, derivative. So we have minus b, ba, dt, okay? So then, what is the equation for that A right here? So it's going to have an angle d theta, and then the arc length we can call ds. So since it is really small of an arc length, right, the, this ds, it acts like a, a triangle, right? So the area dA is going to be half base times the height, so the base is ds, and then the height here is the radius of the semicircular wire, right, r. Then we can say ds here is equal to r d theta, right? So we have here dA is equal to half, ds is equal to r d theta times r. So we have here dA is equal to half r squared d theta, okay? So then that's the equation for the small area here that uh, starts increasing over time as this thing is rotating, right? So it's, uh, it is, um, proportional to the radius squared and how much of the angle is starting to increase, right? The total angle. So then we're going to say the EMF is going to be negative B D by DT of this area, right? DA. So then it's going to be half R squared, half R squared D theta. Uh, what I could do now is I can just say the half R squared comes out. So we have here, uh, negative b over 2 r squared, and then here basically d theta, I can just call that theta, because that's actually the angle. It's gonna increase over time, that angle as it's increasing, right? So I can just call this one uh, theta, and you have here d by dt of theta, so d theta dt. So in other words, the EMF is based on not the angle itself, but the rate of change of the angle. How, as this thing is rotating, how fast that angle that is inside of the magnetic field, how fast that angle is increasing, this angle uh, theta, right? How fast that angle is increasing will determine the EMF, right? If it all of a sudden stands still after entering it, if d theta dt is zero, then the EMF is zero, right? It doesn't really matter what theta is, but it matters that the theta should be changing, right? Well, what is d theta dt? That's omega, right? That's the angular velocity. So then we have here negative b r squared over 2 omega, okay? So the fact that the EMF is negative means what? It means that the current flow through this will be which direction? Okay, usually negative means it's a clockwise current flow. So it's going to be i, it's going to be i, it's going to go like this i, it's going to go like this i, right? Why? 
Well, because the clockwise current flow is going to create a magnetic field into the board because the, uh, the external magnetic field is out of the board. So you have to try to fight against that because the magnetic flux is, the magnetic flux is increasing, right? So this is going to be clockwise, clockwise, clockwise until when? Up to what point is the magnetic flux going to be increasing, right? Until this thing has rotated through uh, 180 degrees and it looks like this, right? Now it's, uh, it is the maximum magnetic flux, right? After that, it's going to start to rotate more. And then what's going to happen? It's going to start decreasing. Then this will reverse directions. The EMF will become positive. Why? Because now the magnetic flux is going to start decreasing. So let's do the case where alpha is constant, right? If alpha is constant, what's the equation for omega? Omega is equal to omega initial plus alpha t, right? So then uh, omega initial is zero, so we have omega is equal to alpha t. So then you just put this EMF here. You say EMF is equal to negative br squared over two alpha t. So that means the EMF is growing linearly over time. Until what time? Until the time is such that this has rotated pi radians, right? So what's the equation theta? Theta is equal to omega initial t plus half alpha t squared, right? So when is theta going to be pi radians? So then you're going to say pi half alpha t squared. So then you're going to say t is equal to 2 pi over alpha greater than zero. Then the EMF will switch direction. It'll be br squared over 2 alpha t, right? For t is greater or same as the square root of what time? Okay, until what time? Well now, uh, how long will it take it to rotate 2 pi radians? So then we put here 2 pi. So then this is goes all the way until square root of 4 pi over alpha. Okay, so the graph of the EMF looks something like this. The EMF as a function of t. Okay, so um, when t is equal to zero, the EMF is zero. Then it is linearly increasing in the negative direction. It's linearly increasing like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, right? Until you reach the time square root of 2 pi over alpha. Okay? Then what's going to happen? It's going to reverse direction, jump all the way from here, all the way to here. Right? Then it's going to increase linearly, right, the EMF, until you reach square root of 4 pi over alpha. Right? Then it's going to jump down all the way from there to here. Right? And then it's going to increase until you reach square root of 6 pi over alpha. Then it's going to jump again. So we can kind of draw it like this, like a, a step function kind of like this, like this. Then go like that. Then go down. Then goes down like this. Right? So linearly increases in the, in the negative direction, which means the uh, current is clockwise. Then the current becomes counterclockwise because the EMF is positive, right? Then it goes clockwise, then it goes counterclockwise, and so on. So all the time, the EMF is increasing linearly, right? So then what's going to happen if alpha is not constant? Let's say alpha itself is increasing linearly, right? Then what's going to happen? Remember the equation was the EMF was negative b r squared over 2 omega. So let's say alpha is given by this function. Alpha itself is increasing linearly. So then how will omega change as a function of time? Omega will be equal to the integral of this, right? So uh, alpha is going to be equal to d omega dt, and then omega is going to equal uh, 1 half t squared. Right? And the omega will therefore increase quadratically, right? Proportional to t squared. Okay? And then the theta will be what? Theta will be um, 
the integral of this again, so this is going to be d theta dt. So then if we integrate that, we're going to get 1, uh, 1 6 t cubed. So the theta is going to increase as a cubic function. Omega is going to be increasing as a square function. Okay? But since the EMF is proportional to the omega, the EMF will look like this, half t squared. right? So the EMF is going to be negative br squared over 4t squared. Okay? Up to what time? Well, up to the time when the theta is equal to pi radians, right? So you can put here pi radians, 1, 6 t cubed, and therefore t is equal to what? 6 pi cube root, right? So this is for t is uh, less or the same as cube root of 6 pi, greater or same as 0, right? And then same thing will happen. Then the EMF will uh, reverse and become positive. So b r squared over 4 t squared, right? So then uh, how long will that last for? Well, until theta is 2 pi. So then you have 2 pi, 1, 6 t cubed. t uh, is going to be 12 pi uh, cube root. So it's, uh, you see you have here t is greater than same as cube root of 6 pi, less or the same as cube root of 12 pi. So it's a similar looking kind of function, but it grows as a quadratic, as a square. So how will this look? Negative br squared, t squared, it's going to look like this, right? It's going to go like this, right? Of course, this value won't be the same as when it was linear because uh, the, the, it's, it's, um, this is a 4, and then it's, uh, it's proportional to the time squared. So definitely, it, uh, the value of the times are different, and the actual value of the EMF is different, right? So then what is this time? This time is going to be cube root of 6 pi. Then it's going to jump up. Then it's going to be quadratic here, like this, right? Then it's going to jump down, it's going to be quadratic here, right? And then this one is going to be cube root of, cube root of 12 pi. And the next one will be cube root of 18 pi. So cube root of 6 pi, cube root of 12 pi, cube root of 18 pi, and then it will be always quadratic. Quadratic like this, and then quadratic like that, then it'll jump here, and it'll go like this, and then so on. So you can see how to do a problem like this where the EMF is constantly jumping also, becoming negative positive, negative positive. And then the, the essence of the negative positive is that the direction of the current is changing every time that you make a uh, half a circle turn, you see? Okay, so now you know how to solve a problem like this. Thank you very much.